You guys ready to check out my new truck? Hold on, your new truck? People are asking us every day, when's the 450 video coming? When is the 450 video coming? Right now. <laughs> and it's, it's today. Right now. New truck day. In this video, we're going to be talking about why we upgraded. We're going to go over the order process and what we ordered. Our favorite features. The towing capacity and all the numbers. And what we've added so far. And of course, we're going to have some towing examples. And we got into a doozy the first time out with this new truck. Oh my gosh. I had just gotten done saying how I hate the feeling of a steep, slow climb towing the RV. And then what happens next? A really bad one. <laughs> We're also going to talk a little bit about what we want to do next. We're going to need some feedback from you guys for that. So stay tuned till the end for that. And we'll wrap up. Oh, I wanted to say that we're going to put um, some chapter markers in here for you. So if you want to skip to a certain section, you will know how to do that. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I've been talking about the 450 and wanting one for a long time. We almost bought a 450 a year ago, but it would have been a different trim level and it would have been the same color as our It looked exactly the same as the 350 yeah. and it didn't have everything that we wanted, but you just wanted a 450 so bad. <laughs> but the voice of reason came in. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. For keeping me in check. That's right. That's my job. It is. The biggest reason we got this 450 was the turn radius. If you have to use a truck like this for your daily driver, which we do because it's our only vehicle, the turn radius is really, really important. I mean, you want to get through the Chick-fil-A drive through without scuffing up the tires on the curbs, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> In just a little bit, we're going to share with you an experiment that he did, which was he filmed the turning radius of the 350 before we got rid of it and the new truck. And you're going to get to see it firsthand with drone footage and everything. <laughs> order process. As you might know, these things are not in stock anywhere. Anywhere. No. Huge problem with parts and shortages and COVID. You know the drill. We knew that going into it. We knew we would have to wait for quite a few months, mm -hmm. and we did. We placed the order on November 3rd, 2021, mm -hmm. and we picked it up on March 25th, 2022. So just shy of five months. Mm -hmm. We mentioned all the bells and whistles, so we ordered the Platinum trim. We did get the FX4 off-road package in addition to the Platinum package. I did peel the stickers off the side though because we don't like decals on our truck. We have gone off-roading a little bit mm -hmm. already. Yeah. Not on purpose. <laughs> we also added the rapid heat supplemental heater. I like which, this option. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know what that is, these things take a long time to warm up. So if you're uh, getting ready to go in the morning in the winter and it's really cold out, you're going to get into a really cold truck. And we would even start it about 30 minutes prior to leaving, and it still isn't very warm in the cab at that point. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to, well, I don't look forward to winter, but I am looking forward to testing it out come mm -hmm. winter because we haven't had much of an opportunity to yeah, use it yet. just a little bit. Mm -hmm. We also got the engine block heater because why not? We also added this guy right here, this ginormous moonroof, sas sunroof, whatever it's called. We also added the adaptive steering package, which I heard was cool and I thought it sounded nice. And <laughs> it is, it's pretty cool. We're gonna get into that. And we added these upfitter switches because that's really great to power all the things that we carry on our dash. And we got the spray and bed liner. Those are the things that we added to the platinum package. Okay, some of our favorite features. This seat right here, I love it. Why, you ask? <laughs> because it is not just a heated seat, but there's also a cooling option. Mm -hmm. And it's got three lumbar areas yeah. of support with 10 levels each. And those lumbar areas can be put into massage mode. <gasps> This is great for long travel days. Oh, man. And it's not like the vibrating massage chairs mm -hmm. that make you all itchy. It makes it feel like it's rolling up yeah, and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and awesome. And it massages your butt. It does. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. 
Speaking of the seats, the seats as well as the steering wheel, the pedals, the mirrors are all powered and tied into the remote setting. So if you program everything the way you like it and then we change drivers, it changes back and forth, which is really, really cool. Also something new in this truck is that the running boards all come out when you open up the door. It's like magic. You open up the yeah. door, it's like... Yeah, it's kind of nice. It tucks them away while you're driving so it doesn't get crap all over mm -hmm. them. I mentioned it has the remote start, of course, via the key fob. You know, so it has a pretty good range to it. But if we're in a restaurant or something, I can also start it via the app. Or you can lock it and do things like that. Now, you might not think you would use that a lot. But imagine you're lying in bed at night and you're trying to think, did I lock the truck? Crap, did I lock the truck? I've done that already. And I pull up my phone and I lock the truck. The one problem with that was if you have the fob with you and you leave the truck, mm -hmm. it makes a noise every time you open the door or shut the door mm -hmm. and it's loud and it's beep, beep. It's like that. Uh, the door's locked sound. Uh -huh. And that was getting annoying, but he figured out how to stop that from happening. Yeah, So coming up. Also new in this truck versus the old one is this has sync version four, which has a lot of cool new features like wireless CarPlay. If you use CarPlay like we do for all your Apple stuff on there. In addition to the sync four, it has a 12 inch screen option now, which is really cool. It's a nice ginormous screen. So it does have a built in hotspot. So you can use your vehicle as a wireless connection point if you want to. We don't have that feature enabled, but it is nice that it is enabled for things like software updates and map updates. You no longer have to download stuff to like a USB key and plug it in and start it and do all the weird stuff. It does it all by itself. The cameras on this thing are so much better than the 350 too. Our 350 had the same number of cameras, I think. I think they've just improved the cameras or maybe even the software, but it wasn't nearly as clear mm. as it is now. We also added the ultimate trailer backup system. I didn't know exactly what that included. I just said, oh yeah, we def I thought that was, was the cameras or something. So we have the system that allows you to back this thing up using the little knob and it kind of does it automatically. I don't know if I will use that. I am used to backing up a fifth wheel, but we're going to have a future video where we're going to hook all that up and test it out. Another feature of the Platinum package is the adaptive cruise control. And I didn't know how much I was going to like that, but I do. He seems <laughs> to like it a lot. As the passenger, I hear him mentioning it. A lot of people have asked if I use cruise control when towing, and I do, depending on the circumstances. Flat and level, Florida, stuff like that, definitely all the time. It's great just to put on the cruise control and sit in the right-hand lane and just go. Now, in the 350, I didn't do it as much in the mountains, but I've been testing this in the mountains, and it's much more responsive. If you've tried using cruise, you know it floors it getting up a hill, and then you get to the top of the hill, and it over-accelerates, and then you're going too fast, and you got to hit the brake. It's always lagging in the hill situation. This, not so much. It is very responsive. The adaptive part of it is where it actually watches the car in front of you and you can set the distance that you want between you and that car in front and it kind of matches the speed up to your cruise control setting. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. I like it. It even gives us warnings too. But... Yeah, that has the blind spot indicators, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is really cool. It has lots of crash features too, yeah. like anti-crash, of course. <laughs> it's yeah. against, we're against crashing. Yes. Just to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. But we've had a couple of situations where somebody stops quickly or is stopping to make a turn. The truck will say, oh, based on your current speed, if you don't do something, you're going to hit this person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I usually know, but it's good to have that extra little set of eyeballs. The watching. first time it happened, it scared me to death. <laughs> it was like, beep, 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 beep. What? True. That's new. That's new. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. Also in the adaptive realm is the adaptive steering. This is hard to describe because what it does is it changes the ratio between your steering wheel and the wheel cut. So when you're going slow, a one turn of the wheel will cut the wheels more than when you're going fast. And it, it's hard to describe, but it's, it feels effortless. Do you want to talk about the turn radius now? Oh, turn radius. Do you guys want to know in the month that we've had this truck, how many times he has said, I couldn't do that with the 350. <laughs> parking lots, uh, drive-throughs, even towing though. When we yeah. were coming out of that one spot at the Tennessee State Park, it would have taken multiple boom, 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 booms like this to wiggle the truck to get it around. That This thing that. spun it right around. But the turn radius is Ooh. awesome for both daily driver not towing and while towing. I've already, in the three locations that we've been in while we've had this truck, noticed the difference in maneuverability. Mm -hmm. 
you know we like to do experiments and prove things. So I measured the outside radius of a turn in the 350 and then I did it with the 450. Now I had to do these in different locations because of the timing of it and all, but I measured about a six to eight foot difference. I wasn't super accurate. I had to use a tape measure and stuff like that, uh, measure it out in segments. I went and watched JD's video, Big Truck, Big RV. If you haven't watched his channel, and I talked to him a little bit about it. He got about the same. I think he measured seven and a half feet difference in turn radius. It feels like more mm -hmm. than that though. There have been a couple times where I was, I was wowed by what spots you could get into. Yeah, it's night and day difference. Speaking of the towing, let's get into all the numbers and details around that. Right now? Uh-huh. I'm out. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let him talk about that stuff. I'm gonna go take care of Daisy. We'll see you later. You guys have fun. Okay. They can't hear you because you don't have a mic on anymore. Okay, bye guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs> see ya. You may wonder why all of a sudden I'm in different clothes with a different haircut. <laughs> uh, we had some audio problems with the stuff I recorded yesterday after Tara left, so I have to re-record it, but here we go. Let's get into the towing numbers. Now I'm gonna be looking down here and reading a couple of them. These are the numbers from the Ford website that you can anybody can find and are common to all F450s. Most of your towing numbers are gonna be like that. The standard trailer towing capacity is 24,200 pounds. That's for a bumper pull. The fifth wheel gooseneck maximum towing capacity is 32,600 pounds. That is quite a big difference. Also, the gross combined weight rating, the weight rating for both the truck and the RV is 43,500 pounds. So pretty good numbers for towing. You're not gonna find a whole lot of RVs or fifth wheels that are gonna take you over those numbers. But let's talk about cargo capacity. Cargo capacity is different from your towing capacity. It is the actual amount of stuff you can put in the truck, inside here, in the bed. It's how much weight the truck can carry. Now, here's where we get into a little bit of a weird situation. Uh, if you watch JD, uh, Big Truck, Big RV, he's talked about this many times, so I'm not gonna go way into detail on this. If you want, I'll link his videos below. He has quite a few on the difference between the 450 and the 350. But the bottom line is most of your 450s are gonna have less cargo capacity than your F350s. And also, you're not gonna find a lot about cargo capacity online because it's different for every truck. And it's all based off of the GVWR, or the maximum, the gross vehicle weight rating. And that's where it gets a little bit weird. It's just an arbitrary number that the government came up with to classify trucks into like class one, two, three, four, and so on. A class three truck has a maximum GVWR of 14,000 pounds. And both the F-350 and F-450 share that number. This is just my guess and my opinion that Ford wanted to keep the F-450 a class three vehicle. Uh, and as you might have noted on some of JD's videos, there's a difference between the F-450 pickup truck, which is what we have, and the F-450, uh, it's like their work duty vehicle. Those can be a class four and higher, I believe. But what we end up with is because the F-450 has some heavier parts on it, it weighs more out the gate. Therefore, there's less room between its weight and the top end of 14,000 pounds. Now, this is where it's kind of weird because uh, if you took an F-350 and you added bigger wheels with higher capacity, bigger tires with higher capacity, bigger, much bigger brakes with higher capacity, uh, a much bigger half shaft on the rear axle with higher capacity, <laughs> a little bit bigger front end frame, uh, a little bit beefier for the wide track front axle, those are all things that kind of improve the carrying capacity in my opinion, but because they weigh more, it takes away from your cargo capacity. So this is one of those situations where I believe that the F450 is underrated. I believe it can handle more than that 14,000 pounds, but that's still what the sticker says. That's what you gotta go by. And it's up to you whether you consider the truck underrated and wanna put a little bit more on it or not. I'm not going to get into that discussion. I'm just telling you what we have. But to get into our numbers, our F-350 had a payload capacity of 5,400 pounds. And this F-450 has a payload capacity of 4,800 pounds. So 600 pounds of more stuff, bigger wheels, brakes, all that stuff, 
means 600 pounds of less cargo capacity from our 350 to our 450. I can tell you that this thing has absolutely no problem stock configuration carrying our giant momentum. We have no squat, it rides nice and level, it's perfect and it tows like a dream. It's a beast. Let's get into some of the things that I added to make it ours, to make it our normal, what we're used to for the things in our cab as you have seen in the past. The first thing that I did was I wired these up fitter switches. You've got six switches up here and these all connect to a relay box that is under the hood on the passenger side over here. On this model, and I think it's also on newer 350s, they've gotten better at placing those relay boxes and wires. These wires here will get wired to here, and then those pop out down here. No longer a need to run wires across the dash and all that stuff, which is awesome. Additionally, they finally give you a little bit of slack down here on the passenger side kick plate. That's where the pass-through bundle comes through. Wiring those to devices up here is really pretty easy in this truck. The side panel pulls off. You can get inside the dash here underneath the glove compartment very easily. And I just wired two of these to DC adapters inside there. That way I've got an easy access to ports underneath the dash right here. And what I did was I wired in our GPS and our backup camera directly to those. And then I wired our dash cam directly to a wiring bundle down in the bottom here because it came with a, a wiring kit. We did upgrade our dash cam. We really liked our Van True N2 Pro, I think is what it was called. And it worked great for the whole length of the truck. We wanted to get the newer version. Van True had been good, so we stuck with it. But now we have the N2S, I think is what it's called. And it has the GPS built in. It's also a little bit higher resolution, so we'll be able to use that in some of our videos now. But we love having the dash cam. It is a great insurance policy. If something happens, you've got video evidence stamped with your GPS and your speed and all that good stuff, so we love that. As far as mounting all of these devices up here goes, I actually moved our built right dash mount from our 350 to our 450. The built right is basically a little bracket that goes in the tray up here and allows you to mount things to it. And they don't have one yet that's specifically designed for the F450 with the 12 inch screen. The biggest changes in this tray are it's deeper in the front and it's also a little bit angled but it still works great i use ram mounts just like we had in the old truck the ram mounts let you have the little arms that articulate all right here's what we got you can see all three devices here are nice and secure what i ended up doing was i talked about the built right dash mount back here but these just mount right to this and I decided to use a long arm and short arm combo here. That way this arm can rest here and take away that movement. And the only moving part is here and it's nice and stiff. These rim mounts are great. The back of this is just some Gorilla two-sided tape that sticks really, really well here. And over here, we've got our rock form case with a rock form mount, just sticks right on there. And this setup has worked really well. It's nice and clean. Don't have wires all over the place. So we don't have suction cups and bolts and sticky things and all that. It's mounted right to that built right dash tray mount and it, it works great. Just to kind of cover all the devices that we do have here, going left to right, we've got our TPMS, a TST 507. We've had this same tire pressure monitoring system since before we even started RVing. I like it because it monitors all 12 tires in one display and not only monitors your pressure, but also your temperature, which is really important. Now the F450 did not come with a built-in TPMS system like our F350 did. And honestly, I'm fine with that. I hated the TPMS in our F350, primarily because the sensors in the wheels would always go bad. Now, I don't know if that was related to that galvanic corrosion problem we had or not with the valve stems, but I replaced, I think, 10 of them. And we only have six wheels, so that'll tell you something. Also up here, of course, my phone. Now, this 450 has wireless CarPlay, so I don't need to plug it in, which is awesome. Uh, but I do because it's a short little cord here and it keeps the phone charged. One of the things I really like about CarPlay in the Sync 4 versus 3 is CarPlay is now kind of just a subset inside 
of the entire system versus having to switch in and out. So it's real easy to get back and forth into and out of CarPlay and also into, you know, the things inside CarPlay itself. It does have a, an induction charger down here in the tray, so I could lay the phone in there. But my 12 Pro S with a case on it is kind of large and it's a little bit difficult to get in there. Plus, I like to have my controls and things right here. We also have our RV GPS. This is the Garmin that we did a review on a couple years ago. We still love it. It routes great for RV. If you're not familiar with the difference between an RV GPS, I recommend you check out that video. But this thing will route us based on our height and width and weight and not get us into any low overpasses that we can't make it under. That would be bad. Next to that is our Furion backup slash observation camera. And there are a lot of newer ones on the market now, and we're probably gonna test one out in the very near future, but it's been a great camera. It connects all the way to the back of our 44 foot fifth wheel with no problems. And it, I don't use it much when backing up. Actually, I don't use it at all when backing up. I wouldn't trust that little screen, but it is great to be able to see behind you when you're driving so you can change lanes. See what I did there? And not have to worry about how far the car is behind you. You can see that you've got room. And of course, our dash cam is just mounted with a suction cup to the window there. Another thing I did was I took a lot of your guys' advice and I bought Forescan, which allows you to plug into the vehicle's OBD port and control and manipulate a lot of the settings that typically only the dealer has access to. Now, I did this for one specific purpose and it's something Tara mentioned just a little bit ago. Beep, beep. And that is the double honk. Anytime you get out of the car and close the door with a key fob in your pocket, it wants to say, hey, hey, beep, beep. You got the key fob in your pocket. So I downloaded it. I changed that setting. I turned it off. Super, super easy. Uh, you can do a lot of things in that four scan. I'm not that familiar with it though. So if you guys have some really cool settings that you think are great to change, uh, let me know because I have access to it now. So that's all I've done inside here. Now outside on the wheels, different story. I essentially set it up just like we had the F350. One of the first things I put on were Centromatics. Now, if you're not familiar with these, they're automatic wheel balancers and they use beads inside a tube that kind of takes centrifugal force or centripetal force. I always get those two mixed up. But the force going out from the spinning of the wheel and any imbalance in the wheel will be offset by those beads kind of shifting and, and nullifying the effect of that vibration. So the idea here is, especially with the dually rear tires where you've got two of them together as a package, it balances them together, which is kind of cool. It's supposed to give you longer tread wear, uh, better tire life, and just you know be better overall for the ride. Also on the tires and wheels, I put on the valve extenders. You know if you've got a dually and if you use a TPMS like we do that has a screw on cap, you just can't get to that inside wheel to get that cap off, to get the thing in there. If you're not going to use a TPMS, it's not a big deal if you can just get a wand extender and stick it in there. But there's not really room for a pass-through TPMS in there, so we have caps. But with the valve extenders, it brings them all right out to the front, and I can put the caps on. Also, this newer version of these valve extenders that I bought, the brackets are a little bit thicker and beefier. And I didn't have room to mount them outside of the hubcap like I did on the F350 because these are a little bit larger. I think I can take these notches, it's just plastic. I'm gonna make one of them a little bit wider because these line up right where the lugs would be. So I could put these over where these go, make the cuts of them a little bit wider so they have a little room to stick out. That's the plan. Creates plenty of room there. It looks great, it works great. I'm really excited about it. The other thing we put on that we also had on our 350 are the Duraflap mud flaps. First flap is done. It just bolts right in using the supplied clips, which are basically these things. No drilling, no cutting, nothing at all. Uh, just a matter of figuring out where all the bolts go. When we first started out, we didn't have rear mud flaps on our truck. And I think we tried some from like WeatherTech or something. They just weren't very good. They were flimsy and just garbage. And we didn't like the giant rock tamers. Terra vetoed those right away, and I'm not a big fan of those either. They're kind of giant. These are really, really good, thick, solid mud flaps. And they're designed to go on without drilling or cutting or anything, so that was awesome. 
we decided to get a new set for this truck. I did them on the front and the rears. The thing I like about the front ones is for the 450, they've got one that kind of sticks out a little bit and you know is made for that wide track. Really, really good mud flaps, American made, American company. I'll have a link down below for those. We're not affiliated or anything with them. We just really liked our mud flaps and they're really reasonably priced too. Another thing I had done based on a lot of your recommendations was the ceramic coating. I've never done this on a vehicle. I've heard it's great. It's kind of expensive. It's kind of like a more permanent wax job, but you don't wax over it. It's kind of a clear coat. I used Mountain Automotive Detailing here in Franklin, North Carolina. It was $1,000 to do our truck with their five-year guaranteed coating but I've had to rinse this off a couple times. I can't use soap on it yet because it needs a couple weeks to cure, but I have rinsed this thing off with just a hose when it's just covered in pollen, and it looks like it's just been detailed. This ceramic coating is nice. So I look forward to trying that out over the long term, but based on what a lot of you guys have said, it should be really good. One thing left to add on here, I've got them in the box. I don't have them on yet, but it's the bed step two. I put one of these on our F350 and it basically allows you a little step that pops out to allow me to step on it and get up into the toolbox. So let's talk a little bit about the ride. A lot of you had mentioned that, hey, if you think that 350 is rough, wait till you get in the 450. But honestly, I think it feels about the same. Terry even backs me up on that. In fact, we had Celastic shackles and airbags on the rear of our F-350. We didn't really know if that helped a lot or not. Don't really know. It was still a very rough ride. Now, the F-450 is a very rough ride. It just is what it is. It's a big truck. But I don't think the ride in the 450 is really any worse than the 350. Now, I know in 2000 and plus on the Super Duties, uh, they did change the suspension a little bit. I think they actually lowered it maybe an inch and a half, couple inches. Uh, I don't know what they did differently with the ride and the shocks, but it seems to ride okay. I mean, yeah, it's not a Cadillac, but it's a big truck. But improving the ride is of interest to us. You know, it is our daily driver. So I've looked into several options and you guys have had several things that you've mentioned. Uh, one of them that I've known about for a long time is the Kelderman. I know they make an air ride system. Now, I'm not sure if that changes the, the towing parameters or towability or not. Another one that I've seen are Carly suspensions. I think those are a little more basic. They've got maybe some different shackles and shocks or something. I'm not really sure what's in that. I've also heard about liquid springs. Apparently that's what is used in a lot of ambulances and things like that that are normally rough rides, but they can't be too rough because you don't want to beat the crap out of somebody laying in the back. I've reached out to each of those and honestly, none of them have gotten back to me. <laughs> so, and I can't find a whole lot online for these systems that doesn't also include like a lift or something different besides just going from stock configuration to stock configuration with a different suspension, be it liquid springs or Kelderman or whatever in a stock configuration just to improve the ride. So if any of you out there know of any good videos that actually show before and after and like a 350 or a 450, you know, with and without special suspension, or if any of you have some contacts uh, who know about these things, uh, I'd love to hear in the comments down below. We are gonna look into that. It's probably not gonna be for several months because we have a lot going on, but I really am interested in trying out something that could improve the ride of the truck. Overall impressions, oh, I love it, I really do. I like everything about this truck. I really like the amenities inside. I love the massage seats, and I absolutely love the turning radius of this thing. It is amazing. If you have any questions, put them down below, and we'll see you next time.